Hello and welcome back to another episode on the EF. EF XR6 Turbo. In this video, we're basically focusing on trying to get this thing as close to running as possible, buttoning up a few little things that are preventing it from actually starting. The other day I went out and I bought some LS coil packs. At first I was just thinking of sticking with the original coil, but in order to future proof the car, I may as well just spend a little bit more money and just get some LS coils. So as you can see here, Ollie thought of this genius way of mounting all these coils together. It's just gonna sit and the leads are gonna go in the stock position. And that's the bracket. All right, check this out. Stripped all the coating off it and then primed it and put some uh, black enamel paint on it. So it's gonna look pretty schmick in there, like I said earlier. So once that's in, I can put the intake plenum on, put the injectors in and the fuel rail on, and maybe even try think of where to put the Raceworks fuel pressure regulator as well. So I've been busy painting and cleaning up that bracket that Ollie and I made for the LS coils. And let me tell you, it looks factory. It's probably the most factory looking thing in this engine bay. You can't really see it because I've actually bolted up the ED plenum for good. I had a intake manifold gasket laying around. So I thought, why not just chuck it on whilst I had the time? But here it is, it's in here. Um, basically like, you can't really see through the camera because the Oh, there you go. It's not mounted up properly because I noticed the paint wasn't dry yet when I was doing it, but I'm gonna mount it up properly today. I ran into an issue with the fuel rail, but that's okay, because Raceworks are to the rescue. So this is the factory fuel rail that came on the EF, which theoretically could use, there's a stock fuel pressure regulator, and that's actually the problem. So it's bolted onto the back of the fuel rail, and I can't use a factory fuel rail because it'll start the engine of fuel. So I had a look, and Raceworks actually make bolt-on ED fuel rails for these cars. Obviously, this isn't an EF plenum or an AU plenum anymore, but they actually make them for an ED. So right now, I've got a few things I need to go pick up. So here's my list over here. Basically, I'm going to have to redo a little bit of the cold side intercooler piping by a 90 degree, two and a half inch cast alley bit here. Also for the external wastegate, the port back here, um, if I just put, if I just weld on the V-band and attach the wastegate as it is, it's not gonna clear anything. So I'm gonna have to buy a 90 degree, 50 mil steam pipe, pick up that Raceworks oil that I made, which is an ED fuel rail and fuel pressure regulator. And we're gonna take the daily chariot. This is what the parts hall looks like for now. We got a ED Raceworks fuel rail. We have, for some reason, two fuel pressure regulators. I don't know why they accidentally gave me two, but I'm gonna have to return one. And we have our two and a half inch 90 weld on. We're gonna go to Sterling Steel in Hallam, I believe, and we're gonna go pick up two 90 degree steam pipes. Guys, my car's making this really weird screaming noise and I accelerate. Have you guys ever experienced that? It's really strange. It sounds like an exhaust leak. <laughs> Alright, so we just got back home now, collected all the parts, and I couldn't help myself when I saw that fuel rail. I'm like, I have to mock it up. Like, it looks so nice. Beautiful billet brackets. They don't sponsor me or anything, but this is some good quality stuff. It's gonna match that black valve cover so well. I'm very impressed. Alright, so here are the injectors. These are actually from these are the original injectors that Rex was meant to run in his EF Barra. On a stock Barra ECU, you can't really calibrate 1250s that well. So they're a bit of an odd size. But since we're using a Haltech, that's not a problem for us. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these uh, adapters because this adapts them to a full size injector. But we're gonna try pop the rail on and see and compare the lengths, see what we need to do. You can just take them off if need be. Also, make sure to use some silicon spray or some petroleum jelly or something that will evaporate or uh, melt with heat. Otherwise, it can ruin the seals. See what it looks like. 
These injectors look like they're too small. They're too short. So since the injectors don't fit, I'm going to have to order some full size adapters because they're obviously not large enough. What I need to figure out now is which one of these fuel lines that I've got hooked up to these bottles is a feed line. I have no idea. But I've got this contraption set up in the boot with my power supply. So I've just hooked it up to the bulkhead right there and we're going to send power to the fuel pump, see which one spits out fuel. Oh, oh yeah, we got fuel. All right, so now we know it's our feed which means we can grab our rail. The back of the rail is going to be a dash six. So that's gonna go straight down to the hard line. JD's and Lentilman, f this car. I've just been under the car for two hours, changing the rear main. Believe it or not, this is the first ever rear main I've ever done and I'm a qualified mechanic. Makes sense of that. So the old rear main was I think welded in from factory. I mean, it's about as old as I am. So it's actually a year younger, but I think I've aged a bit better than that rear main, but nonetheless, it's out. The new one is in, not sure if you can see that, but it's in there. But the reason why I'm doing the rear main is because I've had a lot of issues with the fuel system, ordered the wrong hard line to AN adapters, so I need to wait for those to come in. But I got a package from TI Performance the other day, and it's my new clutch. Just wanna give Jason at TI Performance a massive thank you. I'm gonna be eating these lollies. Um, I'm pretty sure you commented on my post if you're watching this video, so thank you very much for your input. I went ahead and ordered. It's an extreme performance clutch. I've heard a lot of good things about these. So I've gone with a sprung button clutch, essentially. So the second most aggressive clutch you can get for a T5. And the reason why I didn't go for, for a super aggressive clutch is because, uh, as you guys are very well aware, the T5s are made out of dried up dog shit. After picking up my freshly machined flywheel, I chucked it on with some brand new ARP bolts and I proceeded to torque them up to about 100 newton meters. And as you can see in this clip, I'm using a long flathead screwdriver wedged between the frame rail and the ring gear on the flywheel to hold it from turning the engine. All right, as you can see, the new extreme flywheel is on. Looks very similar to the Xeady one, the pressure plate. Similar color, but slightly different. Got it aligned as perfectly as I can by eye. Uh, and we're gonna torque them up. Doing them up to approximately 30 Newton meters. We're gonna go over here to our humongous list. I'm gonna wipe off a few things to make myself feel better. Get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this because we've also done that. Got those, got this one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna seal up the rock cover because that's just been floating on top of the engine for the past god knows how many months. And we're also going to mount the fuel pressure regulator. I started off by applying a little bit of silicon to the rocker cover itself so that when I put the gasket on and flipped it upside down to put it on the motor, it wouldn't fall out and wouldn't give me any grief when I was trying to install it. Once that was done, I transferred it to the motor and renewed the little o-rings that go on the bolts that actually hold down the rocker cover to the head. My neighbors are enjoying themselves in this 38 degree heat. But anyway, like I was saying earlier in the video, um, we need to mount the fuel pressure regulator. So this is my Raceworks fuel pressure regulator. Don't worry, I'm getting a gauge. They're just on back order. We need to mount it obviously. So I was thinking about mounting it just over here, so making a bracket that goes off here and will sit there. But then I thought, what's the point of shaving the bay and making it look all nice when you're just gonna cover it up with a fuel pressure regulator or just anything in general? Like this side isn't really gonna have anything. There's no uh, expansion bottle or anything. I've deleted all that. Uh, we're gonna put a filler neck here uh, on top of the thermostat housing. But what I did last night off camera was I put some rib nuts in the firewall. Um, so it's gonna sit right here right next to the, the, fuel, uh, the fuel rail, and then it, it'll be super easy. So the return, the feed will be here, it'll go straight up, up here, and then the return will go into the fuel pressure regulator and then straight down into the line. It just makes sense, it's gonna look clean. I'm not running heater or AC either, so it's not like these lines are gonna get in the way. Obviously that's aircon, that's heater. So I bought myself some M6 nuts, bolts, and washers. Um, so I want to mount up this regulator. Obviously I've already got the rib nuts in there. So very keen to see what it looks like. I 
actually really rate that FPR being there for a number of reasons. It looks clean. It's also right next to the fuel system. Um, one of these holes has got one hole here, one hole here, and one at the bottom. So one will get blocked off. I'll block off this one here. So then I'll put a 100 degree fitting here. It'll go straight there, inside there, and then the return will go straight down. Another added bonus is it also holds my brake lines. So before my brake lines are like out here and now they're tucked up behind the fuel pressure reg and it's actually holding the brake lines, which is min. Also, don't worry, I'll take the masking tape off. Okay, fuel pressure reg mounted and the coil packs are mounted too. I'll try and show this as best as I can, but it's all bolted in there. Looks very clean and neat and it's actually serviceable as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you're enjoying the EF content, stick around because it's only going to get more exciting. Thank you so much.